ask you questions? Or... Yeah, he didn't feel comfortable because somebody else was interrupting him. He couldn't continue the conversation. Well, he couldn't take the question. So, as an observer, what, what have you discovered so far? Um, it's been really interesting. I'm, I'm amazed by how people can keep the discussions, although they really disagree. Um, vehemently sometimes. Mm. But so any yeah, any anything that has no, sunk in in terms of, of concept wise like yeah, it makes sense. I mean are you a, are you someone who believes in a creator or not? No. So the, the discussion that takes place here is also about whether a creator exists or not. Why 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 um, have you taken this position yourself? Is that after a lot of thinking and contemplation that there's a no, no, no creator? I would say it's based on evidence. I mean, I don't see evidence of the existence or non-existence of a creator. So if you ask me if I do believe that there's not a creator, I would say no. If I, if I believe that there is a creator, I would say no, either, because there's no evidence one way or another. Okay. So there is not enough or sufficient evidence to make you accept that there's a creator? Yeah, I mean, what evidence, what evidence do you think will convince you? Well, usually you cannot just say a thing and make it... A, I mean, everything is something that logically works. Yeah. Say. So what evidence do you think will be absolutely convincing to you that yes, now I understand the creator certainly Some, exists? Um, something that fits with the logic. Uh, an example? For example, if A equals B, B equals C, A equals C, you know, something like that. So if we were to show logically that this universe must have originated from a cause which is uncaused, that's A equals B. This universe that we are in, this universe, this universe, the reality that we are in, Okay. Yeah. Do you think it came from absolute nothingness at one point? Is it possible? Is it possible it comes from nothingness? Is it rational? And, is it reasonable and logical to say this universe can come from nothingness, absolute nothingness, which is the absence of everything? That is like, that itself is a question that I have that I don't know the answer to. So I can't say I've seen it. I think it is this, I think it is that way. Like, but but if you were to if you were to if you carry on uh, investigating this and exploring this question, um, you will come to the realization that absolute nothingness, which is the absence of energy and absence of everything, cannot bring about this universe. Yeah, so it's like it should have something, but if it's not... If it's this the case where you cannot have an option of the universe being originated from absolute nothingness, you are left with one rational option. There was always something. Okay. Or we can be all being somebody's dream. Or if you call up a computer program, Okay. So, so are you a sophist? I'm a okay. what? Sophist? What is a sophist? Okay, this is a, a term. Um, okay, l l let me just tell you normal terms. When you say we cannot be sure about, are you sure about anything about anything? Are you sure about anything? No. Are you sure about that? That's a good question. You see, yes. the self defeating concept. This concept okay. that I'm not sure about anything the and I'm sure I, about... The one thing is I know is that I don't know. Yeah. When you say you don't know, it doesn't mean the answer is not out there. The answer can be known. Do you agree? Mm -hmm. what, what, the answer to what can be known? The question about this universe existing from absolute nothingness or from something else? Uh, yeah. You mean there could be an answer to that? No. What, what we understand logically and rationally rather uh -huh. This universe cannot come from nothingness. This universe has to always something, something has to always exist. Either the cause that brought about this universe, or millions of causes in between. But eventually, there has to be a cause that always existed. You cannot have you cannot have something at, at point there was absolute nothingness because from absolute nothingness will be absolute nothingness. So if there was something that exists always, okay. what is the quality and attribute of this something? Yeah. 
to get to know that. Okay. Existence is one of them. Exists. That thing exists. Possessor of power. Power. Energy. Energy. Uh, Must possess it. Otherwise, we won't be here. We are. We are matter and energy in, interconvertible. So that okay. thing that originated this universe or this reality okay. must be possessor of power. Energy. Yeah, whether you want to call it energy, okay. you know, yep, okay. must be possessor of that. Okay. Must be self-aware, conscious. Okay. So how do you explain things of this reality proceeds from a cause that was always there without causing it willingly? Well, I mean, they haven't randomly, that's why. Uh, Have you ever seen something happen randomly, like this camera coming together randomly and producing itself? Anywhere in this universe, random things come together to make complex, organized things. Yeah, life. No, no, this is your assumption. Life, when you say life came through random organization, that is an assumption. You have no evidence to back this up because this is a belief of people that it came like this. I think they made something like um, some, like they, 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 they put life into some small, like a uh, little bit of protein by like, stimulating electricity through them. That's what the scientists recently managed to make. No. I mean, it's we, electricity and protein. We have not made, we have not made any living cells. We have used stem cells maybe to transfer them or transform them something else. Okay, but we are using existing material to make something else. We haven't been able to make life in the lab. If you start with building more chemicals to make amino acids, from this to make proteins, that's as far as you can go, proteins and peptides. But you cannot then organize itself to make into a live living thing that you know is self-aware and it produces and replicates and then it has all this organization. It doesn't happen. Okay, there's no Okay, I think I read something that about they actually made a small like stingray that actually swims. You read about it again, please. Do that, and then realize that this is not from scratch. This is using, you know, yeah, when we clone, protein. when we clone, no, 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 not from protein to stingray. You have to read it again. When we clone something, when you clone cells, and then we become Dolly the sheep, we already have the existing program built in there. It's already built in. We haven't made anything from just... Humans, just no, humans haven't made anything. Um, right. Nothing else. This nature, for example, is nature aware? Is nature self-conscious? Does nature have a brain? It doesn't have neither. It, it isn't. So how can nature organize things without knowing it, it even exists itself? The rules of physics themselves, do they know they exist? They have to do that? What operates the rules of physics themselves? Are they, are they, are they self-aware? Are the rules of physics self-aware? That I have to be the power of attraction. I have to be the power of repulsion. That I have to do this, I have to do that. These rules are set by something, someone. Well, no. so, I mean, okay, is it possible that we have a different universe in which people float in the sky? In which, when you, when you let that apple go, it goes upwards, not downwards? Possible in our logical thinking. Yeah, it is possible, right? Mm -hmm. So it's possible in different universes, things operate in different ways. But still follow us, follow rules. The question is, where did the rules come from? They come from randomness, like in, in one universe which, happen to which, which randomness in our labs that we have observed creates complexity and order of the nature that we see? Um, time, like hmm? in the like, beginning things are very simple. No, 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 no. When, we, when you ascertain that randomness creates order and complexity. Have we observed anything in our labs anywhere? No, we haven't. Give me an example. Give me an example. There was not ever a simple life form. Life has always been complex. Do you know how complex the, the single cellular organism is? How complex it is? Mind-blowing complex. It's a miracle itself. When we have the when we have all these organelles within the cell, 
right? The lysosomes, the Golgi bodies, the mitochondria. All of this, they're not simple things. They organize each other, they communicate with each other. That's not simple. That's not you. It's relative, right? It's not relative. Like you are made of a million cells. But that one cell that we're talking about, any single cell in the organism, it's not simple. It's such a complex thing, you cannot imagine that can come by randomness. Let me give you an example. Imagine you have a you have the amino acids, chemicals, come together and made peptides and they made proteins, right? That protein somehow became self-aware. And they say, oh, we need to now... Proteins are not self-aware. Okay, so if they're not self-aware, what happens to them? Do they need to know how they re to replicate? You don't need to be self-aware okay. to replicate. Okay, so I mean, would, would, the would they replicate? <laughs> because one of the properties of life is replication. Okay. Not self-awareness. Okay, replication. So do they know that they have to replicate no. the proteins? They then what happens to them? They replicate. Then they, they will not replicate. They do. If they, they replicate, how do they replicate? Well, um, very optimistic. <laughs> how, about, how, how about we break down two things on a lower level? I mean, proteins are made of um, the atoms. The grain of salt. Like, mm -hmm. like, like atoms. So, so I mean, atoms meet an atom awesome. and the atoms meet yeah. and they connect. <laughs> No, How do they connect with each other? By, um, by physical force. Yeah. No, I think it's that physical force came from where? Well, it's just there. Uh, uh, see, your explanation is it's just there. But if we said the creator is just there, you would not accept the explanation. Well, see, like we have to be consistent in our approach. Just there, if that is an explanation which you accept for yourself, the creator of the universe is just there. It's also an explanation. I think that, yeah, but like the, the, the notion of a creator is impossible to prove, no disprove. That's the problem. No, 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 it's, it's not that difficult. You see, when we, when, we, when, when we talk about this universe, this universe demonstrates the effects of the originator of this universe. It demonstrates it. Which one? The laws that are within it, the organization that is within it, the complexity and the organization within the complexity, demonstrate that. When you look at a painting, a beautiful painting, right? A painting with buildings, windows and doors, and a number saying number 10 Downing Street, right? And this a picture of human beings standing in front of it. You look at the painting and you say, it's possible randomness, random acts of ink, paint, brushes or whatever came together over millions and billions of years yeah, and it I mean, produced that painting. It's possible, right, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's possible. Like 1, Do you buy that? Do you buy that? Yeah. So it's possible that particular picture could have been done by randomness by I mean, isn't it chance. calculated? Yeah, isn't it calculated like the 1,000 monkeys, if they pie for a million years, they can pile up a Bible? Impossible. Like, I mean, mathematically, if, uh, like, um, if, a, if a million monkeys pie for, I don't know, how many million years, yeah. they can end up having a Bible. Uh, I mean, um, it's just chance. I mean, it's no, just no. We, we are misunderstanding mathematics here. Misunderstanding mathematics. Uh -huh. Misunderstanding huge Freezing. gap in our mathematics. Okay, so we leave it there. But okay. as Muslims, what we invite you to is to think about the Quran, read it and reflect on it because okay. this Quran that we believe is a guidance from this creator, this originator, which gives us answers to the question that we're asking. Is there a creator? Is there... Look at that! Even before asking, this is a translation of the Quran. All for you. You have a copy? That's, that's good, no problem. Thank you for that anyway. Read and reflect and see what it says about this reality. What it says about your life, our life, what it says about what's going to happen after we die. And you can see whether it is congruent with your heart and your mind. If it is, accept it. Okay, take care. Okay, take care. Okay. Thank you. What if you are dying from thirst and hunger? Would you give your Iman up, your faith up, in order to survive? Probably not. Probably not. Because you'd rather die in hunger and thirst than give up your religion, right? This is how much we value our faith. It's priceless. Brothers and sisters, let me introduce you to Norway. This is a European country where the vast majority of people have become irreligious. There are 200,000 Muslims of a population of about 5 million. And most of these 200,000 Muslims have no idea how to explain Islam to their non-Muslim friends and neighbors. 
But that needs to change. Allah sent his messenger to call people to eternal success. And that is why Muslims in Norway are now establishing a masjid and dawah center to enhance the Norwegian dawah. But they cannot do this alone. We need to support them. If you donate to this cause, you will inshallah reap the rewards of thousands of Muslims coming back to Islam. And many of those will become du'at and invite to Islam. You will share in the reward for all those shahadas and good deeds to come inshallah. So click the link and donate now and share the video for extra reward.